What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over the absolute best loadouts, team compositions, mods, and strategies that will be effective for Master Atheon, even if you don't have every single gun or exotic in the game. So starting off with the best classes and subclasses to use, you're going to want 3-4 to four Well Warlocks with Luna Faction Boots, a Stasis Hunter, and a Bubble Titan with Helm of Saint-14. And if you want more DPS, then switch out the 4th Warlock for a Thunder Crash Titan. In the DPS phase section, I'll explain why each one is important. But for now, that's all you gotta know. When it comes to weapon loadouts for Master Atheon, there are four things you have to consider. DPS, Ammo Economy, Oracles, and Arc Shielded Harpies. So here are four loadouts that account for everything I just mentioned. This is my personal favorite with the Night Watch, Plug 1, and 1k Voices. Obviously, Plug 1's for the Arc Shields and it's a secondary DPS option. 1k Voices, just my main DPS. And Night Watch is what I use for the Oracles and for clearing ads from far away. You can also use Sleeper instead of 1k once the buff comes out in a few days. It's going to be really strong, I'm sure. If you want better ad clear and still really strong DPS, you could use a Thread Needle with the Wither Horde and then an Arc Scout Rifle for Oracles and the Arc Shields. And if you want to run Divinity, you can just run a Scout Rifle, Divinity, and then like an auto loading linear fusion rifle would be good as well. I do strongly recommend having at least one or two divinities on your team. It's going to be very rare for you to have a whole team of 1k voices. That's the only situation where you wouldn't want to have a divinity technically. But even if you had five 1k voices and one divinity, it still would be beneficial. So it's always good to have at least one person running divinity for the people who are using linear fusion rifles on your team. So otherwise, uh, they're probably going to be missing their crits more often than not. So yeah, those are the four loadouts that I recommend the most. However, if you don't have all these things, then you could do just fine with like a main ingredient or maybe just a hung jury. Say you don't even have 1k or sleeper, you just use a random linear fusion rifle you have, like the tarantula maybe. Maybe since you have Archon tarantula, you could use Cartesian or no composure, something like that. Anything like this will be just fine. If you have some people running 1k, some people running linears, and one person running divinity, or maybe everyone's running linears, or everyone's running 1k, you can get away with pretty much all of that. You're going to be doing plenty of damage no matter what, as long as everyone's on time to DPS phase, and they have a somewhat similar loadout to everything I mentioned, you'll be perfectly fine. For armor stat distributions, no matter what class you're on, I recommend 100 recovery and high intellect. But if you're on Warlock, I also recommend running 60 resilience or more, so Atheon doesn't decimate your well in damage phase when it comes to armor mods i really like to run double fusion ammo finder if i'm running 1k and double linear fusion ammo finder if i'm running a linear i use charged up for an extra charge with light stack i like to run fusion rifle loader with fusion rifle dexterity i also like to run protective light it just saves you a lot of times when you're low on health i run concussive dampener and void resist on my chest plate along with shield break charge the reason for void resist and concussive is to take less damage from splash damage specifically Atheon and the Minotaur inside Portal and the Supplicants, and also from the Harpies in the Sky when you're reading Oracles. I also always run Fusion Scavenger from the Seasonal Artifact, as well as Taking Charge just so I can get Protective Light. I don't know why I have these boots on Stasis. Ideally, you should have them on Void so you can put on better already. And lastly, but also really important, make sure you have Particle Deconstruction and Focusing Lens on. That way you're going to be doing maximum amount of damage during damage phase. I also like to use a second chest plate with double reserves so I can grab the rally flag to get extra ammo and then swap back to my damage resist chest plate right after. So before the encounter begins, make sure everyone grabs the rally flag obviously and if you want to know how to glitch the rally flag so you can get two rallies per run, I'll put a link in the description. It's a great way to ensure your team has plenty of ammo, especially if you're running 1k. So once everyone's rallied, just start the encounter like normal. Leave one harpy alive in the sky on each side so they don't respawn. And lastly, for the first part, just don't die here. It's completely avoidable and a waste of a revive, which could screw you over later in the run. So once Atheon opens the time stream, this is where a lot of players start to struggle if they are on the outside team due to lack of coordination, arc shields, and dying to supplicants. To make this easy, all you gotta do is make sure one person calls out their reading oracles and goes up top right away. The other two players will open the portal that was called out by the team inside portal. One person should be standing on top of the plate and the other should be back a bit helping them clear ads. And once the plate for portal is up, just cautiously continue clearing ads only on the side portal is open. The reason for this is you'll be doing damage from portal and I'll get into why more in the DPS section shortly. 
but clearing only that side will reduce the number of ads on that side, making it way less dangerous for people coming out of portal and when doing DPS. But also make sure to take care of the arc shield harpies on both sides. That's because they're probably the biggest threat to the oracle reader up top. And most importantly, just be quick to open the portal, but don't rush anything if you think you're going to die. Do your absolute best to stay alive or you risk starting a chain reaction that could lead to a poor DPS phase or even a team wipe. For inside portal, it's not much different from normal Atheon, other than the gatekeeper and goblins are harder to kill. Just make sure the two players without relic are throwing grenades and maybe even firing a few shots if necessary. And relic holders should be using the slam ability to do initial damage to the gatekeeper and take out the goblins because they will melt you if they aren't dead. If doing challenge, just call out who's getting first, second, and third oracle. I like having relic shoot second, but it's up to you and your fire team, it doesn't matter too much. And to give your team the most out of time's vengeance on the third wave of oracles after killing the second oracle, all three players should rotate toward the portal and shoot the final oracle right before exiting, and just have relic holder cleanse as everyone's exiting the portal, and that's it for inside really. So ideally, right before damage phase actually starts, you're going to want to have a well placed right there on that portal, and obviously right there on that portal if you're going from that side, and you're going to want to bubble bubble there or a bubble there and as soon as possible the hunter is also going to want a super atheon right there the goal should be getting those supers off as quick as possible just to ensure as much time for dps as possible and what i like to do is assign two shield breakers so the detained person goes over there and then the shield breakers both shoot with their energy fusion rifle or whatever else they have and the reason for having two by the way is say for example one of the shield breakers is the one that gets detained and you still have one shield breaker there to get you out. And one really important thing to keep in mind is even when you have your well here, the supplicants, if they do end up rushing in on you, like they're right here, and they're like standing right in front of you, they will kill you even if you're inside well. If you do see them coming down the stairway and they're coming towards you, just instead of like using your 1k, just switch to your fusion rifle and just take them out real quick. If you can prevent them from killing somebody, that's more important than you getting a little bit more damage in. And you may be wondering why I think portal is better than middle. And the reason for that is every time I beat it, we've done it on portal side. And every time I've tried doing middle, the ads on right and left just absolutely laser you, even if you're inside of well. I've just had way more deaths running middle than any time I've run portal. So the reason why I recommend having three to four warlocks is to ensure that when D DPS phase is starting, you do have a well right here. And... And you don't have to wait for someone to come out of the portal to place it basically because that's the most important one of all the supers just make sure that's up as soon as possible another reason it's a great thing to have three to four warlocks is so that mid damage phase you can have the other warlocks that didn't place first place their wells and that way if atheon was doing a lot of damage to the first well and it's about to run out then you're not going to run out midway which is uh, really important and also at the end of damage phase you should have a warlock place another well just so that it lasts long enough so that people have time to just clear ads a little bit right here and get out and once you got situated out of damage phase everyone should come back here place even more wells and place bubble and just take out all the ads over there or if they're on this side take the ads out over here just take out all the ads that's about it honestly you just rinse and repeat everything i just mentioned from the beginning of the encounter to inside and outside and damage phase just really try and aim to get Atheon killed within three damage phases because if you go through four, you might run out of revives before you get to that point. But it's definitely possible to do it in four. Definitely possible to do it in three if you have enough damage though. Just makes it a lot easier and it just makes it runs quicker as well for obvious reasons. But if you haven't attempted it yet, just give it a try and implement what you can from this video. And once you go through a few attempts and see what you and your fire team could be doing better, you'll get the hang of it and it'll become way easier. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll be sure to answer any and all of them. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.